So today I'm going to do a video on this Champion Power Equipment Generator. Um, I've had this generator for about 11 years now. It's carried me through several good power outages. Uh, it's been a very reliable generator. It always starts and runs great. Um, I run it monthly to just make sure everything is working on it. Uh, and the last equipment run I did on it, it came up with uh, low voltage on the output and it wasn't running anything. So um, I'm going to go over what I troubleshot. So he took this end cap off the uh, generator itself, checked all the wiring. I was getting low voltage at these points. And through troubleshooting it, I discovered it has an automatic voltage regulator in it. I ordered one on Amazon and today we're going to put that in there and adjust it so we get the correct voltage. But first let me start it up and show you what the uh, output voltage looks like and uh, we'll get going from there. Okay, since this is going to be really noisy, I'm just going to describe what's going to happen. I'm going to hit the start button. It's going to start the generator. This display will initialize. The V will light up, which will indicate the output voltage, and then we'll see what the output voltage is doing on the generator itself. So as you can see, it shot, started up and then went right to about 80 volts and that's about all it was putting out. Um, that definitely is not what it should be putting out. It should be putting out about 250. Uh, and so hopefully we're gonna replace this AVR in it and we'll be up and running again. But anyways, I do have two of these generators. One runs off propane too. So I do have a backup to my backup generator. So anyways, let's get going and replace this um, AVR and get it adjusted. And one other quick one, my generator actually has a remote wireless um, start system and it uses uh, an extra pair of wires to sh shut the AVR off. I did not order the um, AVR with those extra wires because I don't use the wireless remote. Um, if you do have the wireless remote, there is one that does have um, the extra two wires and that, what that does is it allows the generator to start and warm up for a few seconds before it actually connects the voltage source. Um, not needed in my case so I'm not replacing it with that. Uh, so let me go ahead and get this piece in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this connector and just connect this guy in and then also on the brushes that go to the, um, the um, windings on the generator that Create the field you have to get the polarity correct and just note which um, wire is positive and which one's not um, on the AVR itself there is if you look um, the same kind of little tag that shows a little positive on it so just make sure you get those wires in the correct place because you don't want to get the polarity wrong that is very important so let's go ahead and just pop this guy in. I'm not even going to pull out the old AVR. I'm just going to wire it in um, place because we need to adjust it anyways. You're going to need a little tiny Phillip, or flathead screwdriver to do the adjustment of the voltage. This little potentiometer on the AVR itself. So, all right, let's get going with that. So to adjust the voltage, this potentiometer, I do believe it's clockwise will raise the voltage. Counterclockwise will lower the voltage. I may be backwards on that, but... It doesn't matter, you just the uh, potentiometer to get the desired voltage. I'm gonna use a potentiometer, or not a potentiometer, sorry, not a, a multimeter that's gonna be connected just across the um, windings of the generator. Uh, you can use the display on the generator itself to adjust the voltage, but since I'm gonna be adjusting it back here, I wanna actually see um, as I'm adjusting it, so I don't sit there and reach around and watch the, the um, um, across the two outer windings of the generator here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start it and start adjusting it.
was wrong on the direction counterclockwise, increase the voltage, clockwise, decrease the voltage. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just pull these two bolts out of the AVR itself. Uh, this is a plastic housing on this one. I mean, these are only 18 bucks on Amazon. They do have a aluminum housing one, which was like $28 or $30. Um, get whichever one you feel that you need. Um, the only one thing I do, do um, say is make sure it's kind of the one for your generator. Um, this one was rated for um, between 5 and 8 kilowatt generator um, under normal load. This one that's on here, if you look at the side of it, it says it's rated for 6 kilowatts. I don't know if you can see that right there. So <clears throat> it's in that same range. It works. And I'm going to put this guy back together and just put the covers back on and make sure everything is working again. And I'll zip tie all this stuff back in and kind of get it out of the way. And I'll see you guys in a few minutes. So a real quick note, I, I did pull the old one out. Um, the remote um, for the AVR, you just leave this floating if you don't, if you have one and you don't want to use it. But um, if you're using your remote, you definitely want to get the AVR that does have the extra wires for it. But um, anyways, I'm not using it. Doesn't bother me one bit. Uh, I mounted the new AVR in here, and I'm just going to get the covers on, but I just wanted to note that for you. Um, if you're not going to use it, you can just leave these two wires not connected. If you, if you are using your remote, definitely connect these two wires to an AVR that does have the extra two wires on it. Um, I think on Amazon I only found one that had that on it, and I wasn't really interested in it because I do not use the remote start on this anymore and then one other quick one um, i got the cover back on we're all good there i'm just going to start it and test it in a second here but it the kit did come with a new set of brushes for the field winding um, i checked the brushes on the one that was in the unit they're in perfectly fine shape everything's good good on them so i'm not going to replace it i'm going to use this as a spare for both of my generators um, no reason to replace something that's not broken um, this is the old AVR. This one's just gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna try and peel this potting compound out just to take a look inside of it, see what's on it, see if something cracked. Because it is intermittent. It produces voltage sometimes and then most of the times it does not. Um, anyways, uh, let's start this thing up and make sure we're all good and running. Um, and then another note, always try and get ethanol free fuel, fuel for your generator if you can. You do not want to have a generator sitting around with um, ethanol fuel in it because what happens is ethanol is very hydroscopic. It absorbs water and that destroys your carburetor. So one of the things I do on my monthly runs, I'm just giving you a, um, a little tip here, is I will run the generator for 15 to 20 minutes and then to shut it down I will shut off the fuel pet cock and let it just run until the generator runs out of fuel in the carburetor. So anyways, I'm going to get it started and we're going to do exactly that. the generator because it's a little noisy little bugger but I live out in the middle of nowhere so it doesn't bother me one bit when I have to use it for power outages but anyways uh, I hope you guys found this video helpful if you did hit that thumbs up um, if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button because I got more content coming and I'll catch you guys in the next video and as always thanks for watching <laughs>